Hi, everyone, and welcome to Remaking Tomorrow, a series of conversations about the future of teaching and learning. I'm Ryan Radzeski, here with Greg Baer. We're the co-authors of When You Wonder, You're Learning, Mr. Rogers' Enduring Lessons for Raising Creative, Curious, Caring Kids. This is a podcast powered by Remake Learning, a network that ignites engaging, relevant, and equitable learning in support of young people navigating rapid social and technological change. Today we're talking with Suzanne Walsh, a veteran of several philanthropies, from the Heinz Endowments to the Lumina Foundation to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Today, she's president of Bennett College. Suzanne, welcome to Remaking Tomorrow. Thank you. So let's go back 15 years, because at that time you had just recently left Pittsburgh and you helped me and others notice something. You were the one, Suzanne, who said, as you're thinking about education and looking out at this landscape, you ought to visit places like the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh and the Entertainment Technology Center at Carnegie Mellon University, you know, places at which I hadn't yet been looking. What is it that you were noticing, Suzanne? Because in so many ways, you were the impetus for what is now Remake Learning. I think what happens when you're an outsider you sometimes have a different sense of a community, maybe than people who've lived there their whole lives. When you're new, you're out exploring in a different way. But I'll also say that there were two other factors that come to mind when I think about why was I even able to see some of these things? And then I'll say more about what those things were. One was at that time, Teresa Hines was the chair of the board of the Hines Endowments and her entire ethos was one of exploration and innovation. So I would say I was given a lot of freedom from that chair spot through to the board, through to the leadership at that time. It was an incredible opportunity. And really, we were encouraged to be on the edge. My program area was called the Innovation Economy. And my colleague in the education side of the Heinz Endowments Jerry Balbier once described to me that being a program officer was basically like being an idea scout. And I can't remember if that was really his phrase, but I'm going to give him full credit for that. And I took that seriously. At that time, Pittsburgh was in this big transition. There was still this, what are we going to be? Who are we going to be kind of vibe? And what I kept seeing was it was a super interesting place where both blue collar and the arts and technology were like all coming together. And I just kept following threads of artists really and making, I think my colleagues in the arts program nervous because I was trying to steal their grantees. But I kept coming back to the most interesting things happening in Pittsburgh were all happening at intersections. And so, you know, just as the three rivers come together in Pittsburgh, there were always these themes of things coming together. So at the Children's Museum, yes, it was a museum for children, sure. But I used to like to go over and just, <laughs> if I had a bad day, and wander around because some of the most innovative understanding and use of technology, some of the most innovative and interesting and exciting uses of art, all of those things were happening at the Children's Museum. So the Children's Museum was really, I think, living into the kind of ideas that Mrs. Hines was even kind of pushing us on. And then the Entertainment Technology Center, it opened when I was a program officer and I was one of the first program officers for their work. And again, what delighted me was this mashup of theater and technology. The fact that every student they all have to take a class in improvisation. That just blew my mind. What really at that time was happening was most people were looking at just like a single subject matter. And if you're just looking at the single subject matter, you often miss those kind of interesting things. Suzanne, you use the term intersections. And I think that's such an interesting word because when I think about a network like Remake Learning, in many ways, a network is an intersection of intersections. Can you talk about some of the early ways you and Greg and others facilitated connections between those intersections that were leaping out at you? What the Entertainment Technology Center did so clearly was to push together in my mind all of these different communities because they brought together different departments that at most higher ed institutions, those departments are never gonna get along, right? But part of it was the genius of the president at the time and the 
extra genius or something um, of the faculty members who came together to start the Entertainment Technology Center. And so once you see how innovation happens at those intersections, you almost can't unsee it. So once I saw art and technology, remember this is before steam was like a hot term. That's when I saw things at Carnegie Mellon. So it was the intersection again of theater. There was traditional sort of computer science. There were the visual arts or the graphic arts. And the other thing that they did really well, and Randy Pausch was one of the uh, original folks, they also talked a lot about failure. And Randy used to celebrate failure when students in one of his classes, you know, they tried to create a virtual world that didn't go well. And I love that he would celebrate those failures in public. So all of that was kind of my training ground. So when I started to look around Pittsburgh, anytime there were different groups working together, I got really excited. And then a lot of times I was trying to match make. I thought I was an amazing matchmaker. I thought I was really, really good at it. Speaking of failure, it turns out I wasn't always that great at it. Again, I thought like I could just be like the Entertainment Technology Center or I could be just like the Children's Museum. I could be just like Jane Warner and I could just start putting people together. Yeah, it's not that easy. And what I realized was you have to give people a project to work on together. And that's what I think the Children's Museum did so beautifully was Jane brought together, I will never forget this design competition. And Greg, I think this is when I really brought you over because I was like, you have to see this. It's going to be amazing. And this design competition, what Jane did was she brought people from all over the world, designers from all over the world to come spend time in Pittsburgh and propose ideas for the North side around the Children's Museum. And one of the examples that came out of that was from a design firm in London called Muff. And it's an all women's design firm. And I'll never forget their presentation because again, they're outsiders, not only to Pittsburgh, but the US. And so they spent time in Pittsburgh and they were there on a Sunday when there was a football game. So they had seen the North side, like on other days of the week, you know, at that time, like there wasn't much going on. Oh my goodness. But you know, a football game. And they were like, what is this thing tailgating? <laughs> they were like, what? And what they did was they observed all of these behaviors of people tailgating as you do again, as an outsider, like they were so mystified by it. Like there's food and there's a lot of celebration and community and camaraderie. Well, when they started to reframe what the heck a tailgate is, it was so interesting. And then they said, but then how do you take those ideas and bring them to the North side? So how do you think about other days when you could have that sense of community, when you could maybe have food stalls, when you could maybe have, I don't think food trucks were you know, in at the moment, but you know, that idea of just, they took the notions and the concepts from tailgating and said, how do we apply that then to a neighborhood more consistently and not just when there's a football game. Hey, Suzanne, you describe your moments back in Pittsburgh at that time as being akin to an idea scout. Give us a lesson that you've learned about what it means to be an idea scout that leads to real things in the real world. So my advice for being an idea scout is twofold. One, I think that this book called The Art of Noticing has like 131 ways to just pay attention to things in very different ways. If you take all of those ideas about wonder and curiosity and the art of noticing and literally just sort of randomly pay attention and be open to ideas, that's what allows you to be an idea scout. You have to come at the world, at your everyday experiences with that sense of wonder, with that sense of curiosity. There's a another book that's escaping me the title. But what I loved about it is the author took the same walk around the same set of blocks with seven different people. And each of the people that she would walk with would observe something different on the same exact walk. So when she walked with somebody who was a geologist, they sort of paid attention to all things that were sort of like rocks and you know whatever it is geologists pay attention to. 
And then somebody else who has a different orientation, they're paying attention to yet something else. And so what happens is each of the people that she walks with, they're pointing out different things. And this is a walk she does all the time. And when she did the walk with her toddler, everything is very close to the ground, right? The adults, they're all, they're often like looking up and looking around at a very particular height, but the toddler, like that whole universe is like very close to the ground. And then the other thing was the toddler is basically the same height as a fire hydrant. So the toddler stopped and, you know, really spent a lot of time with the fire hydrant because it was real like eye level. But I say all of that because it's not just about you as an individual paying attention to where there are learning opportunities. And that's the thing, like, it's all about learning when you're paying attention to, to the world. But it's who's going to be your buddy, who's going to help you see things in a different way when you walk that block you've always walked. Somebody can help you to change your perspective. If you have someone along that journey, that's what really helps you to be an idea scout. Because yes, you may notice something, but what makes it exciting and what makes it something different and truly innovative is because you and somebody else or somebody's somebody's else have combined your ideas and your observations and then the idea really blossoms. So remake learning, it's because it's all these different perspectives. Somebody's sharing their perspective of the hydrant because they're kind of at that level and somebody else is looking at the top of the trees or whatever it is. And so what I think about the lesson, I think the lesson is observe, but don't observe by yourself. Stay open to ideas, but again, don't do it by yourself and bring like your craziest friend, your friend that you know is going to have something interesting to say, make sure they're part of the journey. Dr. Wallace, you have had, and you continue to have this amazing career supporting young people and the people who support them. So when you think about your time here in Pittsburgh, I'm curious, what lingers for you? Most people will tell you I've never left Pittsburgh in my mind because the number of times I reference Pittsburgh in a given day is a little uh, over the top. What I learned in Pittsburgh was even though at first people may resist an idea, once they grasp the idea, and really dive into it, it changes everything. And so what I mean by that is to see Remake Learning today is amazing because the first grant that I brought to the Heinz Endowments, it was an ETC grant and I and I introduced it by explaining that it was a video game for education. So keep in mind, this is the early 2000s. Like no one knew what I was talking about, but what I loved was Mrs. Heinz was like, huh, okay, well, you know, My husband plays video games. My children play video games. Okay, yeah, let's try it. And the rest of the board was like, yeah, okay. You know, I love that their whole attitude was, yeah, let's try it. May not really know what you're talking about, but let's try it. And that was sort of the leadership style, again, of my bosses at the endowments as well. So what lingers with me is there's a role for somebody to kind of jump off, take a leap and show people what's possible because that's what we had to do. We had to show what was possible. So then Greg, like you could then say, oh, I get it now. And I think that was the amazing thing about being in Pittsburgh is that again, if you could show people possibility, if you could show them that you could make the impossible possible, even at a micro level, someone else was going to see it at a grander scale. And I think I always love to say to my grantees at the time, like your goal is eventually to have Greg (laughs) Bear interested because you have a way, I think, of really helping a larger group of people understand things and to really elevate in a way that helps us get to scale. Like scale isn't my specialty. And in Pittsburgh, I learned it's okay that scale isn't my specialty because it's Greg's and Greg and I can be partners in this work and the community can see the evolution of these ideas. And then the community gets behind it. Like we tried lots and lots of things in the community. Some things worked and some things didn't, but once they worked and people like, Ooh, they got excited. You could see how it could scale from there. So I I learned that a small group of people can seed an idea or give optimistic hope and model that so that others can build on it and make it even better. 
So as someone who's very much still with us here in Pittsburgh, both as a cheerleader and as a guide and as somebody whose ideas and work have had a very real impact on the folks here, whether directly or indirectly, what do you hope for us? What are your wishes for Pittsburgh? I wish that Pittsburgh really understood how far ahead it is and has been like forever. You know, you can go back to manufacturing. I've been reading this work. It's called Category Pirates. And it's about how do you create your own category that no one else lives in, basically, right? Instead of trying to say, I'm going to compete with others, you create your own category. Well, once Pittsburgh decided we're going to own our own category, I think that's when Pittsburgh shines. This isn't new that Pittsburgh has this innovative edge. I think sometimes... Pittsburgh doesn't do the best job of telling your own stories. In Greensboro, like I reference Pittsburgh so often, any economic development conversation that I'm in or a workforce development conversation, I always mention Pittsburgh. And the reason that Remake Learning is central to that idea of economic development and workforce development is because Remake Learning helps young people to find a place for themselves. It helps young people to say, I have a role in this community. I can not only help to make it better, but I can see that I have career options. So I hope that Pittsburgh really understands how unusual and revolutionary the work is that's happening there. Suzanne, before we go, one last question, please. What's one thing that parents and educators can do today to make tomorrow a more promising place for every learner? Support and encourage curiosity and wonder. I know I'm just repeating (laughs) everything in your book, but truly the most curious children become the most curious adults. And one of the things that I often say at Bennett College is that We live in a VUCA world. VUCA is a military term that means volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And those who are able to navigate that volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world are those who come into those challenges with a sense of wonder and curiosity. And they're not afraid because they they know that we can explore together and we can solve problems together. So the more that children have that experience, they bring that into their adulthood. Thanks again to Dr. Suzanne Walsh, president of Bennett College and an early instigator of Remake Learning. Learn more at remakelearning.org.